Hi, today I want to talk to you about rollers. As you can see here, and if you've watched my studio tour, you will have noticed I have a big collection of rollers. So I just wanted to go through them and discuss what they can and can't do. But the one thing that all my rollers, however cheap or expensive, have in common is that they are soft. And when you are buying a roller for lino cut, especially if you're a novice to it, it's really important to buy yourself a soft roller rather than a hard one. And that's because of the way that it picks up inks. When I look on Lino Cup Friends, which is a fantastic group on Facebook, um, I'd urge you to go and have a look at that and maybe even join it. It's really one of the common things is to see people asking They've got a problem with their print and they'll say, is it the ink? Is it the paper? Is it the way that I'm putting the ink on the lino? And actually, 99% of the time, it's because they've got a hard roller and the roller isn't picking up the ink. If you think of the physics of it, if you have a sheet of plastic or glass and you're rolling out ink and you have a hard roller, it's going to be difficult for that roller to go evenly over the ink and pick up a nice cohesive thin layer of ink. It'll have some bits where the ink is a bit thicker, thicker and some bits where it's thinner. Whereas if you have a soft roller that can sort of squidge down as it goes over the ink, it's much easier to get a nice cohesive thin layer of ink onto the roller, which gives you a much better chance of rolling out a nice cohesive layer of ink on your lino. So soft roller. So if we start at the budget end, of things. There are a couple here that I use and I use them for teaching. So the one that I want to talk about first is this blue handled one. This is made by ESD and they make three rollers, uh, types of roller in this range. There is a red handled one. Now that's a hard roller and unfortunately that one seems to be quite popular for people to have when they're starting um, to use lino and I don't think it does a very good job for lino. It probably does great for other things, but it's too hard. It won't pick up the ink well. This, the blue handled one, this is slightly softer and it has a bit of squidge to it and it works really well. So this is like at the budget end of rollers and I don't know the exact price for this, but I'm guessing about eight, nine quid maybe. And um, it comes in a range of sizes and it's really good. Now they do, I think it's got a black handle, a professional one, and I haven't ever used them, but I'm sure they're absolutely fine. Um, but this is the one that I use for all my classes. It works a treat. So this is the other low cost roller that I have. And this one actually is a hard roller, but it, I get away with it because it's so small. I wouldn't go any, any wider than that with a hard roller. At this sort of size, it still will pick up ink okay. Um, and I'm not looking at inking a large area with this and trying to get a large smooth sheet of colour. So I would use these little rollers when I'm doing a print where uh, a layer of inking requires a mix of colours, which is something that I do sometimes. So I'll mix up three or four different coloured inks and then I'll have three or four of these little rollers and I'll use them to apply to the lino for one inking. So for painting with, really. Um, so that's my little hard roller. And then we get on to the more expensive sort of professional grade. Now this is a, a Japanese rubber roller and these are fairly common to find. There are, there are various makes of these and they're, they're softer, noticeably softer than that, that blue handled S, SD one. And they're great. They're kind of the workhorses of my studio. And you can use, I should say that when you, should you need to, because I teach, I use water-based ink for my student classes and oil-based ink for my work generally. And I use all my rollers for either water-based or oil-based. As long as they're cleaned off at the end, it doesn't actually matter. You can use a roller for both sorts of inking. And um, these, as I say, are the workhorse of my studio and I've got them in various lengths. And um, I've had the oldest one I've got must be 
uh, coming up for maybe 15 years old and it's still working a treat. So they do last a long time. So the Rolls Royce of the rollers I have are these green durathene rollers and these come from uh, Lawrence's. Um, you can find them online. These are absolutely beautiful rollers. They are expensive. Uh, they are an investment. They're not only soft and even softer than the rubber ones, but they're almost sticky as well. And I have a couple of big ones that my family clubbed together. And this was like my birthday and Christmas present. And it was the whole family giving it to me. So, um, but they are fantastic if you want a completely smooth sheet of colour across a large area. So um, they're green material, this durathene, and you can get replacement um, inserts, green bits, roller. That's what I'm trying to say. You can get a replacement roller bit for them. Um, I store, as you will have seen, all my rollers hanging up. If you saw the studio tour, you'll have seen them all hanging on a rack. And it's really, really important to protect your rollers I had somebody who came to do a class once and she told me she'd been given a durathene roller and she'd left it on the side and when she came back it had a big flat bit across it, which was a bit heartbreaking. So do be careful how you store them. The other one I've got here is uh, by Hawthorne and this is a really nice roller too. I'm not quite sure what the material is, but again, it's soft. And this one is kind of the steampunk of rollers with this big frame on it. Um, but it's it's good to show you because you can see clearly on this one the bolts. And it is important to maintain rollers and to keep them clean. So they do need taking apart occasionally. So here is one that I've taken apart to show you. This is another Japanese rubber roller. And I've just taken the, it's got a little screw in it, and I've just taken that apart. And the reason for that is that the frame gets very dirty. So periodically, I have a very satisfying session where I undo them all, and I get a knife, and I scrape out all the hardened ink and get rid of it, and make sure that everything is nice and clean before I put it back together again. So if you maintain your rollers, they will do really well. I hang mine up out of sunlight. I'm not sure if that makes a big difference or not, but I've always tried to keep them in the shade. And my one piece of advice to those of you who've just taken up Lino Cut is that if you're going to spend money anywhere, spend it on a good roller. That's, that's really where to focus the spendiness because a good soft roller will make everything much easier. Thank you for watching and I hope you'll join me next time.